I have to say, out of the recent new updates that we've gotten from Minecraft, like 1.18, 1.17, 1.16, etc., the main menu that I love the most, I think, is this one. <laughs> I love it. Hello and welcome to a video of what we got so far in the brand new Minecraft 1.19 update. I'm currently running with Snapshot 22W17A, which is currently the latest Snapshot release at the time of recording this. And I just thought it would be cool to take a look at what we got in the 1.19 update so far. Also, if you're asking why my skin is Alex, I have no idea. Something must be broken. But I'm sure that will get fixed in the next one. Regardless, though, I want to start off with the brand new biome that we have been given, which is, of course, the Mangrove Swamp. Mangrove Swamp? Mangrove Swamp. Mangrove swamp. Oh, just casually 4,531 blocks away. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> now I should say as well that this video isn't going to be specifically detailed, like I'm not gonna come with all sorts of calculations and details about, well, everything. For more detailed snapshot reviews, I highly recommend checking out someone like Susumavoid, who covers things in way more depth. This is just really an overview of what we got so far, and this is the mangrove swamp, and... I love the color of the leaves. An interesting note as well is that we got moss growing on like the mangrove roots. That's really cool. But yeah, these are the trees. We got the roots going into the water here and then the main stem in the middle. And we got these mangrove propagules, which I hope I said that right, which is actually how you grow these trees. So these are actually, well, the sapling of these trees. If I just go ahead and do something like this, Plant it, grow it, and there we go. Now these won't always be fully grown. Like if I hit into survival mode, I don't even know if I can pick it up with my hands. I can, okay. But not always will they be fully grown. I have seen some have baby ones which aren't fully grown, which you can either bone meal or wait for them to finish growing. And right in here, we have the mangrove word. Now before I cover that, I do want to take a little bit closer look of the swamp here, because that is not the only thing that we got of interest. We of course have mud. Gotta love the mud. And of course this is a spawn place for frogs as well, but I'm not really seeing any. We will be taking a look at those in a moment anyway. I also don't have my zoom button, which is a little bit annoying for this. But oh well. Now the first thing that I want to mention about the mud block is if I take a quick slab of something, when you walk into the mud you can see you actually go down, so you can't actually, if I step down the mud here, I can't go up of the sap, of the sapling? No, slab. So if I surround myself completely, I'm stuck. I, I can't get out. I can of course jump, but I can't just walk up, which is... I find it interesting, kind of like soul sand. Now you can do a few different things with the with the mud. You can, for example, combine the mud with mangrove roots, and you get muddy mangrove roots. Now when you set up this one, you are not lowered, so this is more of a solid block. And well, yeah, there you got it. Now what you can also do with the mud is combine it with wheat, and you get packed mud, which when you have packed mud, you can go ahead and make mud bricks. And with these mud bricks, of course, you can go ahead and make slabs, stairs, and walls. I'm running out of showcase area on this island, I must say. And there we have the different bug blocks. And the sound is weird, like... I'm not sure if I like it or not. I guess it fits. Now, one thing that I'm a little bit off about is that you need a pickaxe in order to break this. As it is mud, you would think you can... Well, you can kind of... You could break this with your fists and get it back. But bricks... Yeah, that's tougher. You need a pickaxe for that. I guess it makes sense because it's bricks, but yeah, would it make sense? I guess it does. I guess it does actually make sense since it would eventually dry. So yeah, I guess don't listen to me. But yeah, so we have these blocks right here and I do love the colors of it. I think this will go great with bills. Now, speaking of colors, we of course have the mangrove log, which of course we can turn into a bunch of different things. Of course, we have the door, we have signs, we have fences, and we also got the strip lock, of course. I do really like the, the color of this. If we take a look at the crimson wood as an example next to it, you think it's kind of like the crimson wood, but then when you place it down, it's really not like the crimson wood at all. Like, it's very different. Blood orangey, crimson purpley. 
that probably didn't make much sense. We of course got the door, which I really like the look of. The signs and all the other blocks, of course. I like the trapdoor. And of course, we also have the leaves, which have quite a unique texture, but I like it. Now, of course, speaking of wood, I cannot ignore the, first of all, mangrove boat, but also we got boats with chests. Finally, I've been wanting this feature for a very long time. Now, first of all, the mangrove boat, as it is. Love it. But of course, what is even better than the mangrove boat is a mangrove boat with chest. So we access the chest, we can hold down shift and right click the boat, or we can get in the boat and press E to access the inventory. And I love this. If I were to go on ad an adventure early game where I don't have any light to ride across the ocean, I would definitely want this because it, it, it gives me more inventory space. When I'm looting shipwrecks and near the shore stuff, maybe I find a village near a shore and then I continue on my journey. Having this is going to be really useful. Also, is it new that you can push boats like this? Like this much? I don't feel like you were able to do that before. And you can, of course, get it with all the other wood textures. Now, of course, as we have the swamp, we must cover the frogs. Hey, buddy. Now, there are three different colors of frogs. This brown orangey one, there's a white one, and I believe there's a green one as well. And they can jump quite high. <laughs> I love the animation of them, like the walking, the eating. Okay, yeah, spawn a few more in here. Eat up, fellas. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that animation. Now what they also eat, of course, are magma slimes, magma cubes. Now when they eat these, of course, they drop the brand new frog lights. This is the uh, og ogre, og ocher, och, 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 chews, ch choose, ch choose, uh, You know what I'm giving? I'm, I I give up. We have the yellow <laughs> frog light, but we also have two others, and yeah, you get an advancement when you have all three of them. We have the green one and the purple one. I can pronounce this one. Pearlescent frog light, the dent frog light, and then we have the one I'm going to from now on call ogre frog light. Yellow, green, purple. Now, I don't think you can actually do anything with these other than decorate them with, for example, brand new mangrove trap doors. Yeah. I'd say that works. Pretty cool. Brand new light blocks. Now, speaking of frogs, of course, we cannot continue without covering the frog babies. If I just make a little bit of a pool here, hold some slime, and I do have particles disabled, but there we go. When we breed them, they place in... The block is called frog spawn, but shouldn't these be tadpole eggs? Because technically they're eggs, right? But anyways, when those hatch, they turn into... <laughs> well, tadpoles, and they look very cute. And you can also put one in a bucket if you want to, and look at that funny face the rest of your Minecraft playing days. Yep, you can have a little buddy with you on your adventures. Would you look at that? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. This guy is strong. He can really push me. Wow. Now, speaking of animals, we, of course, have... Well, the goat isn't really new, but we got goat horns. Out of all the ones that I chose. Hi. Yeah, th this... No. <laughs> no. But the way you get goat horns are quite, in my opinion, complicated. The only way you can get goat horns are if goats slam their heads into a natural generated block, such as a log or a stone. I'm not sure exactly on all the different types of blocks that work. Why am I typing trees? I need bone meal. So if I put down an oak sapling, now this should count as a naturally generated block. So if I, in theory, went ahead and took some fence, surrounded this fella and placed, not a tadpole, but a goat, and had a lot of patience when this guy eventually hits his head into this log, that's a chance that his horn will, well, pop off and I can use it to make weird sounds. Or oh, sound like a pillager starting a raid. Is that frog? Moving sideways? Okay. Moving on. I'm not sure what the chances of this are, but uh, yeah, that that's how you would, I guess, farm these goat horns. Excuse me, did the, did, did you just, 
How did you... I was looking at the wiki and... You just... Okay. Um, apparently you need a way higher fence in closed area because otherwise... Well... That happened. Okay, please look at the wiki now. Okay, I'm glad I looked. So the goat horn can be dropped when a goat rams a tree or any other hard block that occurs naturally where goats spawn. So this includes coal ore, emerald ore, iron ore, log, packed ice, or stone. And just to reiterate, goats will not ram other solid blocks or instances where the blocks that I just mentioned, emerald ore, etc., have been placed by a player. So in this case, if you want to really farm goat horns, I guess you will um, sapling, growing it, and then... Wow. <laughs> and then putting a goat in an enclosure is the way to go. We have four, eight different goat horns. I've got to play all of them. You will have to experience that for yourself. Happy hunting. Oh, wait a minute. It also says that the goat horn can be found in pillage outposts with a 50% chance. Well, now that you say it, I have to try. So 50% chance here that a goat horn will spawn in this specific... Uh, oh, there we go. In this specific outpost. Oh yeah, we got a we got a goat horn. Okay, victory! This is a very lonely tent, I must say. Now the next thing that I quickly want to take a brief look at is the ancient city. Now I already made a video about the ancient city, so if you're interested, you can go ahead and check that video out. I'm not gonna go in too many details with this, but some things have changed since I was last here. And I do want to give this a little bit of a look. Right after giving myself a hundred, wait, is that a million? I think that's a million seconds of night vision. There we go. So the ancient city, I feel like is a lot bigger than when I was taking a look at this place last, but maybe it was just the area that it was in in my last video, or the place has actually gotten bigger. Speaking of loot, I believe some of the loot has actually changed, but I believe something else that is new are these dark oak planks, which are spawning, well, Different places and oh dear, <laughs> that's that's not good. Also, I believe this ladder is new as well. In this like T section, T intersection. Yeah, I feel like those are new. So we got more dark oak stuff here, and also this, which seems very familiar. This is the kind of structure and the wood that the pillagers use. So, has the pillagers already been here? That is interesting. That really does add to the lore of this place. Of course, we have more chests. I have to open this. Oh boy. Yep, pretty good loot, I guess. I think I can... With one of these buttons... Aha! Take the NBT data with me and place it somewhere safe. Yep. Oh yeah, we got these echo shots. We'll get back to those in a moment. Yep, this thing right here. Wait to spoil it, game. So apparently some of the things that you can get in these chests, other than echo shots, New disc fragments, because we have a new music disc, and the swift sneak enchantments are things like normal music discs, potion of regeneration 2, enchanted books, enchanted iron and diamond leggings, enchanted diamond hose, and enchanted golden apples. That's really cool. Hold on. I'm just reading something interesting here on the wiki. If the frame of reinforced deep slate generates with a chest in front of it, it will always contain one golden apple. A hint about how to open the secret door below. Secret door? What secret door? Am I am, 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 am I missing something here? Okay, yes I am. But that's not a trap chest. Okay, I think this is very much new. How would one open this? This is some circuit. Okay, so the door is right under the bridge, right here. Leading in. And then we have a bunch of redstone mechanics. Okay then, these almost look like redstone experiment rooms or something weird. Wow, I did not expect this at all. Had I not seen that in the wiki, I don't think I would have found this at all. Well, how to open this door is a mystery to me. I will leave that up to you guys to experiment with and find out. That's cool though. Also, now that we're here, I really do hope a lot of people are saying that this is a portal. And I do agree, this would be huge if Mojang decided in the future to add a new dimension revolving around all of this stuff. It would be insanely cool. That bat is triggering <laughs> those gold sensors, that's funny. We also got some sort of structure here, no. Oh dear, oh dear, nope. 
Bye bye. Yeah, hey fella. I just wanted to check out those chests. Oh, there we go. Diamond leggings. Right, well, I guess that brings us on to the warden, which has gotten a new ability that it didn't have last time I took a look at this guy. So if I place a warden right here, take some sheep, spawn a bunch out here. This should get the warden very angry, and since it can't actually get to them, it should use its brand new attack. And boom, Sonic Blast. Now an interesting thing, oh, there it goes. <laughs> an interesting thing about the Warden Sonic Blast is that it ignores your armor and deals five hearts of damage. So even if you have another right armor, you still gotta be careful. I'm pretty sure it also ignores the shield. So um, yeah, that's, um, this guy's tough. He's getting very tough. Now, as we're talking about the Warden, something new as well is... If I just take this and also take a Strength Potion, just so this gets sped up a little bit. Go ahead and kill this guy. Which shall be back in like 30 minutes or so. And dead. Yep, and now it drops a Skull Catalyst if you manage to kill it. Which, in my opinion, is a little bit... Eh? Considering how long it took me to kill it using strength and a sharpness 5 netherite sword. I feel like players need a little bit more of a reward to, to, to killing it. I however have still not gotten a disc fragment. Oh well, here it is. The music disc fragment. Right there. And I believe you need 8 of them in order to craft... Oh. Nope, you need 9. 9 of them in order to make the music disc. Now I'm not going to play this, you can play this for yourself, um, but uh, yeah. if I were to say one word about it, creepy. Now I cannot wait for 1.19 to fully release, so we actually have this in the game, because this is going to be really cool to explore, and really creepy. If I just go ahead and clear my effect, this is how dark it is, and my brightness setting is such a bright. So yeah. This is going to be fun, interesting, and extremely dangerous. Also, that ancient city was right below this village. Kinda, kinda creepy. I'm glad I'm not one of them. The final thing that I want to cover is the LA, which for that we will need a note block and some form of item. I guess I'll take diamonds. So, the LA. Now, the LA will sometimes spawn in cages next to pillage outposts, similar to the Iron Golem and inside woodland mansions. Now the LA is a bit special, so if I have a stack of diamonds, I'm gonna right click and give that LA an item, so now it has an item carrying around it. So if I drop some diamonds over here, it's gonna go ahead, pick up those, and it's going to come to me eventually, there we go, and it's going to give me set diamonds. So if I throw some more over here, some over here, and one over there, it's going to collect all of them. So it gave me these, Maybe it hasn't detected, there we go. And it's gonna get that one as well, and it's gonna come and give them to me. Now if I go ahead and play this note block, as you can see, that small like indicator there indicates that that LA is now for 30 seconds tied to this note block. So if I throw some diamonds over here, it's gonna go ahead and collect them, and instead of collecting it to giving it to me, it's going to throw it over by the note block. Just like that. Now, like I said, it only works for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, the LA will come back to you, the player, and give it to you instead of the note block. So I guess what the LA really is, is a flying harbor collection system. <laughs> I guess that is what really the LA is. So I guess if you were to use an LA in some sort of farm, you would need to... There we go, as you saw, this 30 seconds are over and it delivers them to me now. But yeah, if you're using an LA for a farm, for the collection system or something, you would need to rig up some sort of clocking system so that the note block makes a sound every 30 minutes to make sure the LA goes to that and not you, the player. But uh, yeah, I guess that is what the LA really is. I must say, it's actually cute. And if you want to take the item from it, you just right click it with an empty hand. A thing to note about the LA is that they cannot duplicate items, nor can they take items from chests. Which I think would be really cool if they could, but they can't. Now I completely forgot about the Echo Shards, which we found down in the ancient city. And what we can use these to make is the brand new recovery compass, which might I add looks 
Super cool. Now, as you can see, this compass is currently going crazy. It doesn't know where to point. But if I really quickly set my spawn and I leave the compass there for when I spawn and I go ahead and die right by this hill and I respawn, I go out and I pick up the compass, it will point to where I died last, which is such a useful feature. And as you can see, it has found the exact spot where I died. This is such a cool feature and honestly I'm really happy that this has been added. But I believe that is pretty much it and what we got in Minecraft 1.19 so far. Again, we're still in the snapshots. I don't know when the official release is. The wiki still says release date is 2022. No more than that, so we could be close and we could also be further away. Let me know down below in the comments what you think of the update so far, if they're missing anything, if you think they should change something. Let me know down below in the comments, I'll be very curious to see. But anyways, that's it from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave it a like and subscribe if you're new. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and goodbye. Oh, right in time for the rain. I'm gonna go to the village and take cover. <laughs>